Hey everyone, welcome to another Coding on iPad Pro video. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to show you how to place, interact with, and remove AR objects in Reality Kit. At the end of this video, you'll have your very own AR app that can do this. It will be a great learning experience. This is an easy difficulty project. However, I am assuming that you're comfortable with coding and the Swift programming language. In this video, we're going to learn how to place an AR object in our physical space, how to move, rotate, and scale an AR object, and finally, we're going to learn how to remove an AR object from our scene. So what you'll need to follow along with this video is an iPad, the Swift Playgrounds app, and optionally, an external keyboard and trackpad. And that's it. So without further ado, let's get started. Step one is to place an AR object in our physical space. To do that, we're going to open up Swift Playgrounds and create a new playground. If you don't have this app already, make sure to download it with the link in the description below. So I've also created a outline of comments of things that we're going to do throughout this video, just to make it easier to keep track of it and also to keep it organized. So the first thing that we're going to do to be able to place an AR object in our, in our physical space is to import the frameworks that are required. And so we're going to import AR kit. Uh, we're also going to import reality kit. And finally, we're going to import playground support. Um, this is needed because we're using Swift Playgrounds. Now, the second thing that we're going to do is to create an AR view. To create this AR view, we're going to say let AR view equals AR view. Um, and then we're going to select uh, the constructor that allows us to pass in a frame, a camera mode, and a bool for automatically configure session. Um, so the frame, we're actually going to just create dot zero. Uh, Swift Playgrounds will automatically infer the, the, the dimensions of the frame. And so we're just going to provide a dot zero. And then our camera mode, you either have AR and non AR, we're going to select dot AR. And then we want um, it to automatically be configured. So this will configure uh, lighting, reflections, plane detection, etc. And so that's how you create your AR view. Next, we're going to create our model entity. A model entity is needed to display a shape or an object, an AR object in Reality Kit. And so the first thing that we need for a model entity is a mesh. So we're going to create a mesh. In this case, we're going to just create a simple primitive cube. And so we're going to use a mesh resource generate box. And we're going to make that 0 0.2 meters uh, all around. So this is a cube. And then we are going to create a material. Um, in order to create a model entity, you need a mesh and a material. And so we're going to create our material. And in this case, we're going to use a simple material. Um, and we're going to use a constructor that allows us to provide in a color, roughness value, and metallic value. Um, so we're going to say we're making this blue. And then the roughness is 0 0.5. And then for metallic, we're going to say true. If you're not familiar with these parameters, I suggest that you play around just so you can see um, what each of them does. And then finally, we're going to create our model entity. And so the model entity will use a constructor, there's several constructors you can use, but we're going to use one um, that allows us to select, let's see, there's several, yep, yeah, the one that allows us to pass in a mesh and an array of materials. So we're going to pass in our mesh. And then we're just going to pass in an array with a single element, in this case, our blue material. Okay, so that's the model entity. Now, in order to uh, add an AR object to our physical space, we have to add, add this to an anchor. Um, all objects need to be attached to an anchor. In this case, Reality Kit has an anchor entity. And so we're going to create an anchor entity. And we're going to keep this simple. Um, we're just going to use um, plane alignment to create this anchor. So wherever um, ARKit finds or ReactiKit finds a uh, horizontal plane, that's where we're going to place our cube. So um, it'll just be a random location on a horizontal surface. Okay, and then what we shouldn't forget is that we also have to add our model entity to our anchor entity. So in this case, we're going to say anchor entity dot add, um, add child. Um, and then we are going to add our model entity.
okay? Like that. Um, and one more thing that we have to do, now that we have our anchor entity, which has our model entity attached to it, we need to place this anchor in our scene. And scene is a property of the AR view. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say AR view dot scene dot add, um, add anchor in this case, and then we're gonna add, add our anchor entity. Um, and this is really all the code you need to be able to add an object to your physical space. Granted that a horizontal plane has been detected. Um, and the final thing for the first step is that we have to set our live view, we have to set our AR view to the live view of the playground. And to do that, we're gonna use our playground support. So we're gonna say playground page dot current set live view, and then we're gonna pass in our AR view. And so just to recap, we imported our frameworks needed to be able to run Reality Kit and AR Kit. We created an AR view using a very simple but powerful constructor. And then we created a simple AR cube um, to place in our scene using a mesh, a material, which then created a model entity, which was then attached to an anchor entity and then attached to the scene. And then finally, we set our live view um, to the AR view. Okay, so let's try this out and see how it works. Okay, so it's asking permission to be able to access the camera, which is the usual, and there you see it, right? Our cube is in our space. Now, you may have noticed that it was really quick to, um, to place the cube. That's because I have the 2020 iPad Pro in this case, and it has a LiDAR sensor, so it's very quick to detect surfaces, um, whether it's horizontal surfaces, vertical surfaces, even objects such as furniture. And so if you don't have that, make sure to move your iPad about the space to map it. In step two, we're gonna enable gestures to move, rotate, and scale an AR object. To do that, we have to do two things for Reality Kit. We have to generate collision shapes so that Reality Kit knows that we can move an object. And then we have to install our desired gestures for that object. So let's do that. We're gonna say, to generate our collision shapes, we're gonna do model entity, dot generate collision shapes, and we're gonna set recursive to true. If your object has multiple entities nested within it, then the recursive true will essentially create collision shapes for all of these objects. So in this case, we just have a simple cube, but we're still setting it to true. And then the second part is to install the gestures. And so the gestures are installed on our AR view. So we're gonna say AR view install gestures, and we're gonna select a constructor that allows us to set which gestures we want and for what object. In this case, I'm gonna enable all gestures. So translation, which is just moving the object, rotation, so dot rotation, and finally, we're gonna say dot scale. Now, if your AR experience doesn't need scaling, for example, if you're building a furniture try before you buy app, right? Where you wanna see how a couch or a chair would look in your space. You don't want the user to be able to scale that um, object only to move and rotate. And so make sure to pass in whatever gestures you need for your experience in this array. And then finally, we go we're going to also set for model entity. And these are the only two things that we need to be able to um, allow the user to interact with our object. So this is very powerful um, in Reality Kit. So let's test it. Okay, so we're going to move around. And now we have our cube and we can we can see, we can, so we can move, right? I'm just moving with one finger, we can rotate, but we can also at the same time scale by pinching. And so this is really awesome. For step three, we're gonna use a gesture to remove our AR object from the scene. Now, this is a little bit more complicated than step one and two, so I'm gonna go a bit slower. Um, as you can see, there are four parts to step three. Um, in this case, it's numbered six. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an extension to our AR view. To do this, we're going to say extension AR view. And then we're going to move in parts 6A and 6B in our AR view extension. Now, in our extension, we want to have the logic of our gesture recognizer and the function that handles the removal of our object. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new function called enable object removal, which will essentially 
uh, create a long press gesture recognizer and add it to our AR view. In this case, we're using a long press on the screen. Um, and if that is actually at the location of an object, then that object will be removed. And so we're gonna say let long press gesture recognizer equals uh, UI long press gesture recognizer. And we're gonna make our target um, the AR view, in this case, the cell, because we're using an extension. And our action is gonna be uh, a selector, which is really just a function. Um, and we're gonna call this handle long press. And then we're gonna say recognizer. Okay, so whenever this, this gesture recognizer is triggered, um, the AR view is gonna essentially call the handle long press and it's gonna pass in the recognizer. Now we have to be able to, we have to add this gesture recognizer to our AR view. So we're gonna say self add gesture recognizer and we're gonna add our long press gesture recognizer. Now this is done. Now we're seeing an error that's because it uh, the playground doesn't know what this identifier handle long press is, but we're going to actually work on that right now. So that error should go away quickly. Um, now, since we're using a hashtag selector and then function name, that's an objective C way of doing things. And so we have to add a objc word in front of our function. And then we're just going to say handle long press and our recognizer is gonna be of type UI long press gesture recognizer. And so in this function, we're gonna handle our removal of the air object. So this is how we want it to work. When the user taps on the screen, that is a 2D point um, on a plane. We will essentially want to see if there is a ray through that point um, into our physical space, if that collides or if that hits a AR object, we want this object to be removed. And so uh, Reality Kit has a very convenient way of doing this. So that's what we're gonna do. So initially we're gonna say let location, this is the location on the screen, so a 2D coordinate. We're gonna say uh, let location uh, recognizer dot location in self, in this case the air view. So we wanna get our recognizer from the function parameter, and then we wanna see the location in the AR view, right? And we're gonna store this. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, an if let AR view, oops. So AR view if let, uh, this is gonna be our entity equals self dot uh, entity add. And so AR view dot entity add essentially uh, looks for the closest AR entity or the, the closest entity um, at that point. And so it automatically handles kind of like that, that hit test or ray casting, if you will. And so we're gonna say at location. Now this may result in a nil if there's nothing there. And so that's why we're using the if let to safely unwrap this optional. So if we actually have our, let's see, yeah, okay, we don't have an error anymore. Um, if we, have an entity, then we actually want to see if this is our cube. Now we're going to go back up to our anchor entity code and we're going to give our anchor entity a name uh, because we want to be able to, sh we want to make sure that we're deleting the right anchor in this case. And so we're going to say cube anchor. You can name it whatever you want, just make sure it's a distinct name. Now that we have our, our, en our anchor entity has a name, we're going to say, okay, we now want to get a, let's see, if let. So we're gonna again do a safe unwrap of our anchor. And so we're gonna say, we're gonna say if let anchor entity equals entity dot anchor and our um, anchor entity dot name equals uh, cube anchor. Okay, I'll explain this line of code. Um, so what we want to do, let's make, make sure it says, uh, oops, yeah, we want to make that equivalent. Okay, great. So we don't know if the entity actually has an anchor. And so we're going to, again, save unwrap this to make sure that we get in our anchor entity. And if this anchor entity has the name of cube anchor, we know that was the anchor we placed 
uh, when we placed our cube. And so now we know for a fact that we have our cube or our cube anchor. And so we're not going to remove the cube, we're actually going to remove the anchor of the cube, and that automatically removes the cube as well. And so we're going to say uh, anchor entity dot remove from parent. Um, and just to add a message that we've done this, we're going to say, okay, removing uh, or removed anchor with name. Um, because we want to make sure that we, we also give a message to the developer or the user that we've successfully removed our, um, our anchor entity. And so this should be all the code. Actually, no, we have one more thing, almost forgot. We have to enable this object removal before this will work. And so in part 6C, uh, this is below the extension. We're going to say arView.enable object removal. If we don't call this, the gesture isn't added to the arView and none of it will work. And so we have to make sure to do this. So just to recap quickly, um, we create an extension to our arView. Then we added a long press gesture recognizer that will trigger our handle long press function. In this function, we got the location on the screen, which then used reality kits. Uh, dot entity method to get to see if there's an entity there and if there was an entity there we check if it's our cube if it's our cube we move its anchor and obviously the model itself and so that's it let's try it and see how it works okay so we're going to move this a little bit we're going to scale it and then we're going to long press oh let's long press there we go so you have to press in, in on, on the object for, I think, two seconds or so. But as you can see, um, this app works great. Now, I hope you enjoyed this Coding on iPad Pro video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Like this video if it was helpful and subscribe to see more videos like these.